Hey guys, welcome to 10 Minute English with May. And today we're going to tackle the most difficult SAT reading passage, which is the passage one, passage two, persuasive text. So before we dive in, we have to know that 90% um, of the time, these two passages, they are debating each other, there's controversy, so they're very argumentative. So the word choices, unlike expository text, would be a lot stronger. And there would be a lot of shift between what we call the they say, I say. Because if you remember, they are not writing high school essays, not opinionated. They have to address the opposing view as well. And the reason for addressing opposing view is so that they can find the weakness in it and argue it against it. So in their own favor. But in this case, we're looking at these passages adapted from Lincoln-Douglas debates. So passage one is from a statement by Stephen Douglas or Stephen Douglas. And passage two is from a statement by Abraham Lincoln Douglas, uh, by Abraham Lincoln. So both of them engage in a series of debates while com competing for a U.S. Senate seat in 1858. So right away, you can see uh, Stephen Douglas starts off with a they say because he says, Mr. Lincoln likens. So Mr. Lincoln says, they say, that bond of the federal constitution joining free and slave states together to a house divided against itself and says that it is contrary to the law of God and cannot stand. So this is Mr. Lincoln's claim. So what did he say actually? Mr. Lincoln says joining free and slave states together to a house divided. That is not good because it's contrary to the law of God. When did he learn? And right away you can see, oh, it's time to question, right? Because we see a lot of rhetorical questions, meaning he's trying to undermine Mr. Lincoln's statement. Undermine means weaken. So when did Mr. Lincoln learn and by what authority does he proclaim that this government is contrary to the law of God and can't stand? It has stood. So he's answering that, right? Because this is rhetorical. After rhetorical question, he says, it has stood thus divided. So he says, divided is good. Now that is the I say. Divided into free and slave states from its organization up to this day during that period. So when we were divided, there's so many benefits. We increase from 4 million to 30 million. So that is our reason one, right? Population increase. We extended our period, sorry, our territory from Mississippi to the Pacific Ocean. We have acquired Florida and Texas, right? And then you see a bunch of semicolons. So that is just parallel structure. He's just giving a series of examples. So that is why when you're reading um, persuasive text, it can be quite repetitive. They give you a lot of examples, but pretty much when you see all these semicolons, you know that, oh, this is just the I say. He's using a lot of different examples to support the claim. And what claim is that? It is contrary to the they say, meaning, hey, having free and slave states divided is good. So I'm going to write, I say, divided, good. And the rest is just support. Okay, so I'm going to move down to the second paragraph. Uh, actually, before that, let's go to 20. That's the last example. Under a union divided, which Mr. Lincoln thinks because of such division cannot stand. So again, he's pointing the finger at Mr. Lincoln saying, I gave you so many benefits and you say it cannot stand. So obviously you're wrong. And then you can see this sarcasm, right? Very sarcastic. Surely Mr. Lincoln is a wiser man than those who framed the government. How can anyone be wiser than the forefathers, right? People always show respect for people like Washington, Roosevelt, so on and so forth. I now come back to the question. 
Why cannot this union exist forever divided? So why? As our forefathers made it. So this is actually what we call appeal to authority and also appeal to identity. So what do we mean by appeal to authority? It means that we name somebody who is very credible, who is well-trusted or a celebrity, so that it can make our statement more credible. Also, we talk about appeal to identity so we can draw out strong emotions from our audience. And knowing how most Americans, they're patriotic, they love their countries. When you mention the Constitution, our forefathers, they like, yeah, they're right. Okay. It can thus exist if we each state will carry out the principles upon which our institutions were founded to wit the right of which each state to do as it pleases. See, that is his central claim, right? You know what? Leave us be. So what if we want slavery? So what if it's divided? Don't meddle with our business. Just act upon that great principle and this union will not only live forever, but it will extend and expand. If you listen to me, America will prosper. We must bear in mind. So do you see how now the pronoun has shifted? From I to we, right, we start to see our we, and that is paving the way to call to action. So whenever you see strong directives, we, it means the author wants to build a report, right, for call to action. Support me. We are the best. Together, we can make things happen. Right. We must bear in mind that we're yet a young nation growing with the rapidity unequal in the history of the world that our national increase is great and that emigration from the old world is increasing, requiring us to expand and acquire new territory from time to time in order to give our people land to live upon. So do you see how he's pointing a problem? This is like expository text, right? Whenever there's problem, you're waiting for solution. So he's saying, hey, our current problem is there's a lot of immigration so it's important that we expand our land. And how do we expand our land? We remain divided as our father intended us to. So if we live upon the principle of state's rights and state sovereignty, each state regulating its own affairs and minding its own business, we can go on and extend indefinitely, just as fast and as far as we need the territory. So now I want you to try to sum up the passage in one short sentence, pretty much is Mr. Lincoln says joining free and slave states and letting it be divided is wrong. Pretty much Lincoln wants the Southern states to abandon slavery, right? And they want the whole states to unite. But he's saying, nope, let us be and America will prosper. So Lincoln wrong and he is wrong so wrong that he is going against forefathers will all right and let's take a look at what passage two says that's by lincoln in complaining what i said in my speech at springfield in which he says i accepted my nomination for the senatorship he again so do you see how he's like he 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 so this is starting with they say so passage one says i do this i do that Right. He again quotes the portion in which I said a house divided itself cannot stand. Now he's going to clarify. Say, like, you know what? You are twisting my words. So I say he tries to persuade us that there must be a variety in different institutions of the states of the union, right? Because he says to let the states run their own course, to not buy, mind their own business that that variety necessarily proceeds from the variety of soil. So what Lincoln does is very smart. He is actually making concession. So what that means is he is partially acknowledging the opposing view. So he's saying, yeah, it is true. You know, sometimes we should remain different when we have different institutions because we have different soil climate Face of country, we have difference in natural features. See, I agree to all that. That is a 
clear concession. But remember, whenever there is clear concession, it's going to pave the way to his main argument because he's not going, going to agree with passage one. Have these the matters ever produced any difficult question among us? So do you see the similarity in technique? They both threw in a rhetorical question. Paving the way to his own argument. It's like, nope, arguing about those. that we, We've never argued about those. In fact, we all agree that they should manage your state differently. Have we ever quarreled? So do you see again? Repetitive punctuation is a good clue that you can skim really fast, right? Now, I'm going to go to line 67, right? Because there's a strong transition word. But hasn't been so with this element of slavery. Rhetorical, obviously not. No, we fought for the issue. We fought against the issue of slavery. Have we not always had quarrels and difficulties over it? So that means we cannot treat the issue of slavery like other different issues where it doesn't matter, where it doesn't involve fighting. And when will we cease to have quarrels over it like causes produce like effects? It is worthwhile to observe that we have generally had comparative peace upon the slavery question that there has been no cause for alarm until so what is the problem well usually we're okay but then when would problems arise when you southern states are excited by the effort to spread it into new territory so it's like southern states you are the cause of the problem if you want to keep slavery in your own states Maybe we can get along together, but that's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to spread it into our states. So really, Lincoln is calling out the hypocrisy of passage one. You said, don't mind other states' business, but you're spreading slavery to other states. What are you doing? Right? So all the trouble and convulsion, and again, negative word choices, has proceeded from efforts to spread it over more territory. Thus the, state, thus the date of the Missouri Compromise. See, he even used history to back himself up. So that is another rhetorical, I'm not rhetorical, sorry, persuasive technique, right? By using history, we're appealing to people's logos, logic, and reasoning. Because if it happened before, we are sure it's going to happen again. It was so again, see, not just one example, with the annexation of Texas. So with the territory acquired by the Mexican War, and it is so now. So a list of historical evidence. Whenever there has been an effort to spread it, there has been agitation resistance. Do you think that the nature of men will be changed? That the, that the same causes that produce agitation at one time will not have the same effect at another. So he ends again with rhetorical question. Okay, so basically how Lincoln organizes his argument is saying, I understand what passage one is saying, that is that they say, and he makes concession. In some situations like agriculture and natural features, I agree states can manage themselves, but pave the way not slavery give historical evidence and then say, do you really think something like this has happened over and over again and you trying to spread slavery is not going to cause problem? Unlikely. Okay, and that is it for our persuasive text. So if any of you is interested in understanding this kind of reading passages, uh, I can actually do one class on persuasive techniques. All right, so I will see you next time. Bye-bye.